Let me be straight and honest with you. The first thing that would come to mind when I would hear about the province of Maguindanao is the Empatuan massacre, graft cases, and malversation charges. But this video is not about that. How do we take a whole province and scrutinize it based on a minority of insurgent fighters? But this province in Mindanao is full of life and inhabited by a culturally rich and important people that complete the patchwork of the Philippines, one that needs to be sewn together. Yes, vigilance is still warranted, but that doesn't mean that it should shadow our curiosity to learn and interact with this part of our nation. This video is about a small taste of the beauty that can be found all around Maguindanao. Welcome to the beautiful Cotabato city. This is my first time here. I didn't even know this place was here, which is incredible for me. Um, and it's so beautiful. I'm actually here for a food festival that's happening tomorrow. But before that, I really wanted to discover the beautiful people and beautiful flavors of the region and just meet lots of different folks that are very proud of their food. And hopefully, we get to have some good bites. Before the Spanish and the Americans, there were the Chinese Muslims, Persians, and Arab traders. With them came religion, culture, structure of government, and food. This part of the country gave the Spanish a hard time in the 16th century, managing to preserve until this day a strong identity, which sets it apart from the rest of the country. Today, both Muslims and non-Muslims in these areas take pride in the variety of dishes that history has molded. We're here in Barangay Tamuntakan to look and catch the mudfish. This is an integral part, obviously, of the dish that we're featuring today, which is the tinapayan. And that's been there for a while trying to catch a fish. So finally, I think he has one. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a mudfish, but it's probably not the prettiest thing, uh, but it tastes really good. And so there are multiple ways of catching it. You can either do it with a net. Some people do it with traps where they kind of dig holes um, in, in these kinds of areas, either rice paddies or marshes or or lakes and then they burrow and then they, the mudfish just naturally congregate towards these areas. Um, but here they also do it with a rod, which is a much more traditional way of doing it. Um, let's check if you have something. All right, so this is that. So he has a fish. This is the mudfish that we've, we've been looking at. I've seen mudfish before that are much, much uh, bigger than this. This is kind of like a small, small size mudfish, um, which is exactly what they need for this kind of dish. So. Basically, we're going to wait till we catch a couple and then we're going to move on to the kitchen where we're going to be able to see exactly how they use this fish. Um, but before that, I feel like we met a beautiful, beautiful uh, grandmother. They call her Mama Ping. Um, and she's going to show us how to make tapai, which is like a fermented rice dish, which is, again, an integral part of this dish, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Like, there's so many processes that go to preparing this and nothing goes to waste. So she's gonna show us how to do that quickly, then we're gonna move on to a kitchen. At almost every stall in the markets around Cotabato City, tinapayan is sold. It's also the one dish people kept telling me that was special to them, so I just had to learn more about it. Mudfish is a carnivorous fish that usually emerges during the rainy seasons and survives on insects, frogs, and snails. Once the fish captured, we headed to a nearby hut where Babi Ping would show us how to make one of the most popular dishes in these areas that plays an essential role in making tinapayan. Tapai, a traditional fermented rice found in many Southeast Asian cultures. Cooked rice is mixed with a little sugar and an active yeast powder, wrapped in alum leaves and left to ferment overnight. Tinapayan 
To show me how the rest of the dish comes together, Bobby Ping brought me to her and her daughter's restaurant in the middle of town. So this here is the reason why we're here. This is the beautifully smelling tinapayan. What I love about this dish, it represents everything I believe in in terms of sustainable cooking, using absolutely everything that's at your disposal, and trying to use whole ingredients as much as possible. It's one of those recipes that probably younger generations won't make as much because it just takes so much love and time to actually create. We had the fish a while ago, we were showing how to make the tapai. So the tapai, what happened is, after they were filled in these little purses, were left for 24 hours overnight, so that's one day. I'm gonna try the tapai alone. It has a sweet, kind of soury finish, which is actually really quite nice. And I can totally get behind this because it's something that's really filling and it just has a really interesting flavor and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge sucker for anything fermented. Okay, let's make the tin of iron. <laughs> Unlike its Luzon counterpart, which benefits slightly from more fame, Burong Isda, tin of iron develops a distinct meaty flavor due to the fact that the fish is first dried. It is then smothered with our tasty tapai, water, ginger, garlic, lemongrass, and sometimes some onions. It's then left to rest covered for a week. The result is a fungal and lactic acid bacterial fermented dried fish, a process we've inherited centuries before electricity was around. In this form, it can be kept up to a month. The flakes are then placed in some coconut oil, flaked and cooked with a little sugar until almost caramelized. <laughs> It's close. Malapit uh, na. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> one to ten. Pila scoring. Ten pina kama po. One pina kama baba. You scoring. One. One. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I quit. I quit. I'm done. Oh, ten. 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 Yes. Eleven pa. There, there you go. When you smell it, it's actually really weird because you do smell almost a lot of like umami caramelized flavors and when we put it in the pot as you saw it basically was just the fermented fish that was covered with the tapai and then broken up in a large large quantity of oil until it kind of just became nice and brown and crispy um, and you smell it and it almost smells like soy and a sugar mix which is insane um, and I'm really excited to try it so we're gonna mix this with a little bit of rice it's really good it's almost like um, adobo flakes, but with fish. It's really tasty. You can still, you know, taste the um, the importance of the tapai in there. Like the sourness is still there, but it's not as funky um, as it was a while ago. And obviously, the oil just kind of helps bind everything together. But it tastes fantastic. Like it has so many kind of flavors, and it's just so delicate. So I can definitely understand why this is a delicacy. I can't wait to see what else the region can produce in terms of food. What we've eaten so far has been fantastic, um, and this really just tops the charts for now. Every city we've been to in the Philippines has this area where you can kind of congregate and a lot of people come into, and regardless of how many people you ask in terms of recommendations where to go, they will always recommend certain places that are very kind of like emotionally tied to how they feel about their city and then the food that they eat and this just so happens to be it. It's a string of different barbecue restaurants that are set up. You would think that barbecue isn't necessarily something special but apparently the native chicken here tastes very different from other places so we're about to give it a try. It actually does look very beautiful um, and these are the places I like to come to because they're very kind of like humble and, and you, you know people in the city come here um, which I really greatly appreciate that. Okay, it's good. Very good. Very tasty. This is the famous white sauce. And we asked what it was, and she said it was Sprite, vinegar, garlic, coconut oil, uh, coconut, sorry, coconut milk, some sugar, um, and calamansi, I think, which is a very odd combination. <laughs> what I love about native chicken, it's its, it's texture. And the flavor is always going to be much better. The sauce is good. The sauce is really good. Chicken's really great, but the sauce, come here for the sauce. Sprite and coconut milk, who thought? Okay, so we're with Babu Asha, and we're gonna make a local uh, dessert or sweet called pilipid, which is a combination of white glutinous rice and then some 
black rice that's mixed in with some water and then this is pounded through a grinder machine to then form a paste. But obviously before that happens, it kind of stays together for one hour, mostly just to kind of develop this rich color that it has. So once it's been grinded into a paste, um, this is what we get here, right? And then you're gonna form that into this shape. Ah, twist it. This. <laughs> nope. I think you're very, you're better, she's better than me, for sure. Just a while ago, we cooked Pilipit. And then this one is Tinagtag. Okay, this one is Panganan Sising. Okay. This one is Tipas. Bulwa and doodle. Okay. So uh, usually, Maguindanao delicacies are served during Kanduli or every time there's a celebration mm -hmm. in a family. So this is the first that they serve to their guests just to make sure that the guests are, uh, are, aren't going to be that hungry Hungry. when the main course comes. Okay. Got it. So it's like a sign of welcome. And, yes. Okay. So um, a lot of these delicacies are actually rice-based. Mm -hmm. For example, this one is doodle. It's made of rice flour, cocoa milk, and sugar. Those are the basic ingredients of what a doodle is. Mm -hmm. So let's give it a try. It's very popular among kids. It's good. Like it, it, one, I love anything that's glutinous rice based. Okay. And I love black rice. That's delicious. And then this is, so this is the doodle, right? It looks intense. <laughs> and similar also to what Bohol has. Mm. Uh, the yeah. minatamis, their minatamis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. Okay, I'm gonna try every bit of everything. I feel like I'm gonna have the biggest sugar rush after this. <laughs> it's like super intense. This is really intri intriguing though. That, I mean, it's it's rice flour, but it has kind of like a texture of a, an actual pastry or muffin yes. or, or cake or yes, something. Yes. So, like it seems simple to do, but me, someone who's absolutely terrible at baking, I know using rice flour to have that effect is, is kind of tough. So these are like sugar chips, basically. Yes. <laughs> like biscuits. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's very different. That's a very strange taste. Not yeah. strange in a bad way, but I mean like it's a very different Sometimes. flavor. And this one, I had a little bit late, a while ago. It's I know you're not supposed to crack it like that. <laughs> it's also called tinagtag because basically when you cook, you like tagtag. Tag -tag. You have to make tag 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 the coconut shells or the milk. This is good because it's not too sweet. Yes. Like out of all of them, it's the least sweet out of them. What I love about this is the dexterity that it would take to make this. But I have to say my two favorites are these two. Doodle and Pilipin. Yeah. yeah. The doodle for me is really tasty. After a full day of meeting literally hundreds of people, I felt like I had only scratched the surface of what the city has to offer. I almost instinctively became anxious knowing that I just didn't have enough time. All I can do is make the effort, as we should all, to learn as much as I can from the people I met and from what resources I can find. Even if it's from a distance, our initiative is sure to be appreciated and welcomed with hospitable delight. In the next video in Maguindanao, get ready for a feast of senses as I introduce you to the various provinces of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao.